everyone. I'm super happy to be here with Jeremy Ravenel. And uh, today, a new episode of Let's Talk AI. Jeremy, can you introduce yourself in a few words? Yeah, sure. Um, so my name is Jeremy. I'm French. Um, I come from a non-technical background. I mm -hmm. am a financial analyst by training. I did a master in finance, focus on cash uh, management and treasury. Um, and I was the I was that guy in in the, um, in the business department that knows better how to get the data, crush the data into Excel, create reports for for the the boss basically. <clears throat> so I tried to extend my tool and stack of tools um, to something greater than Excel and VBA and PowerPoint, and this is how I deep dive into data and AI. So yeah, that's a bit of a short story. Awesome. Awesome. This is a great retrospective. And I have so many things uh, I would like to talk about you. I would like to talk about NAS with you, uh, which is your uh, software as a service uh, that you're building. And uh, I've also seen a lot of posts from you about uh, how to use AI and data for env env environmental sorry, um, issues, yeah. um, how to how to take care of the planet with data. So that would be one thing that I would be super interested in asking about. Um, but uh, let's start uh, by, by the beginning. Well, you know what? I would be really interesting to know um, a little bit. Uh, well, first of all, can you tell us about what is NAS? So NAS, um, as I told you, I, I was a financial analyst. I was using Excel, VBA, PowerPoint, and I was really fed up and, and, and scared about the future of my, my, um, my work. Mm. Um, Excel doesn't scale, it's not automated, it doesn't bring any kind of trust in how the data is constructed because you mm -hmm. cannot be plugged to the systems and everything. So I deep dive into data science. And of course, the first thing that I did was downloading Anaconda um, on my uh, local machine and started uh, opening a notebook and, and, and learned a bit of uh, how Python works and uh, how to transform the data mm -hmm. with the scripting approach versus a uh, manual copy pasting approach that you can have or, uh, um, or maybe a bit scripting in the VBA world but still you know very mm -hmm. very different to go into a notebook <clears throat> go into um, Python and, and learn about how things are done mm -hmm. um, in data so I, I started this way okay um, I left my my nine to five jobs six years ago. Uh, started my own business, uh, consulting business, and I started doing integration work from the source data to dashboards by writing scripts um, with, uh, there was me, my brother, also my brother is in the finance, was in finance on the, on the banking side. So we started doing some consulting work on this mm -hmm. and we were really frustrated because we didn't manage to automate our work. You know, when you do a notebook in the data world, yeah. you do a notebook and then things things are should be done differently. You know, you have a, a way mm -hmm. to develop the first script in your notebook and then a way to push it to production for, yes. you know, standardization and industrialization. Mm -hmm. And we were very frustrated because we were not able to industrialize our scripts ourselves. Mm -hmm. We're really dependent on the IT team. Yes. And you know how crazy the backlog of the IT and data mm -hmm. can be. So we were like, oh, shit, we need to like figure out how to deliver value faster. Because when you, when you work with business teams, you show them the notebook and the result of the notebook, they're like, yeah, okay, numbers are good. You can go forward. And then you wait weeks before it goes to an automation. So mm -hmm. I dive into the work of uh, Netflix. I found out that Netflix was actually running a notebook infrastructure that Uh, enables all their uh, all their employees actually to spin up a notebook instance in their browser and start making queries inside the notebook to get any kind of data literally because they have a policy where all the data is open and everybody can query anything. So they had this technology that enable automation and mm -hmm. email uh, delivery of the output of the notebook to 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 their users. And mm. this component was called Paper Mill. Oh yes, it, it's it's well known now um, to to productionize notebooks and and so we we use this component to create the foundation, the layer one 
of NAS, uh, which is the features layer. And this feature layer is based on low code, a low code approach. I'm mm -hmm. from Excel, so I tried to create sort of formulas where um, you have like a tabular kind of approach. You do your function and then you put into parentheses argument one, two, three. So basically it was nas.scheduler.add and then you put a cron, cron uh, task inside parentheses. You mm -hmm. put that into your notebook and you have a notebook running every day at nine. And then we added the notification feature where you can send an email. Then we created a, an asset feature where you can expose a graph that has been created into the notebook to the outside world through the email. Then we created a webbook feature to trigger the notebook from a distant point than your actual instance. Mm -hmm. So all those were the low code features, the low mm -hmm. code layer. On top of this, we created uh, another layer called the drivers. Mm. And the drivers is basically connection to tools, um, but not in a way that, uh, you know, Airbyte or, or all those five trend or, you know, big like ELT solutions do. We mm -hmm. just want to pinpoint specific like data sets or, yes. uh, so we are like a data mesh kind of this, this driver is kind of a data mesh library mm -hmm. where you, you just ping whatever what you want and you get an, a data frame mm -hmm. um, inside your notebook with it. So this is the layer two. It's kind of the, the integration layer, while the feature layer is more like a DevOps kind of layer. And um, and um, the third layer is um, the templates. And the templates are basically business logics that are already created. Mm -hmm. So we use templates as logic gates, basically, where you have a always the same structure in the template. You have an input section, a model section, and, and an output section. And you use these templates as components mm -hmm. to create uh, what we call data products. And the data products can be dashboards, it can be APIs, they can be alerting system. Uh, in the future, we might be also able to fine tune like chat, chat AI system like uh, GPT, but fine tune for a specific purpose. So we have like, this idea of using templates and not mm -hmm. templates as components mm -hmm. to be the building blocks of data products. Mm -hmm. And this is how, what the platform is meant to be at the end of the day. We are, we are still building it, but at the end of the day, and, and but we are already like people using it and, and clients, but we are still in the, in, in the very beginning of the data product yes. building era. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel like uh, everything done in data so far is more about infrastructure and and very, very, you know, uh, uh, specified kind of tools. Mm -hmm. I believe that it's going to be more horizontal in the coming, uh, because you can see it in every any kind of, of market, right? You you get specialized and then eventually everything consolidate to one. Uh, mm. You see it for the iPhone and for all this kind of big tech that you, you have like uh, consolidation of technologies at one point. So we believe that NAS is going to become this platform mm -hmm. all in one based on notebooks, enabling you to really create anything you want in the notebook using the templates and ship your data products in a very efficient uh, way. And this is already happening with a few of our clients that we, we take care of. And now we are like working on how to scale that thing that we created. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing uh, what is NAS and all those loose details. I have so many questions. I found so many things super uh, inspiring about what you said and, and uh, I want to go back on, on different points. The first point that I would like to, to bro that, 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 that I was thinking on my own is you said you came from a financial background. Yeah. And today you have, and then you said that you left your um, nine five job to start your own consulting company. Um, and I feel like you've, you've made a very uncommon path in your career, not in a way that you were very good at Excel and bringing value to the to the business people and the one that needed to take decisions, but to come from a financial background, because I have also a financial background and uh, we are not taught, uh, we're not even familiar with Python or very, very little just to like do yeah. portfolio, uh, portfolio management things and just balance your portfolio. This is the kind of things you might do with Python in finance. Um, yeah. And, and yet, you've achieved so many things and you're building a SaaS and you're so aware of all the technolo technologies um, that implies everything. So how did your learning path goes and how did you 
gain all this knowledge through the years by having this financial background to today being one of the leaders of NAS and pushing this SaaS that really adds value to the business users? Yeah, it's a good question. I always was fascinated by tech. I know I come from, I think if you really, if I really deep dive into the the ideas, mm-hmm. I, I'm, <clears throat> I'm not a technical guy, but I'm fascinated by one thing, which is language mm-hmm. uh, and lang- language, history, uh, music, everything that communicates things to people. I'm, I'm yes. fascinated by this. Mm-hmm. So when I, when I, had my first computer i was like oh shit, that's good i can do i can make computers do things i can i always saw technology to the i'm talking to someone else which is a computer but i'm i'm basically using a certain kind of language to communicate mm-hmm. with the with the machine mm-hmm. and um so this was my like baseline um i'd never saw I saw a lot of abstraction and everything which comes back to language and how you communicate Yes. Uh, between two parties mm-hmm. um so this was like the baseline and so i always was aware of you know technology always very interested in this i entered the um, the, the, the finance background not by choice but by like my dad forcing me to do business school because it pays well at the end of the road and you will pay off your debt anyway so this was like and it was the financial crisis at the time that i was like doing this loan so i deep dive into it and understand about finance so the question is more about why did you went so far from the tech to come back to it at the end of the day because i was already like really really uh, uh keen on 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 working on in tech in the tech sector when i was mm-hmm. like 17 18 but okay. then i chose a different path more on, on economy and 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 finance but um, yeah, I always had this double kind of uh, mentality or mindset. Or, mm-hmm. I don't know. Uh, so it, it's more like um, on, on, in your question, you were right about we are not told when you, you come from a business standpoint, you're not told about technologies and how to use it and how to organize your data. You learn it by yourself, basically. Mm-hmm. You learn by yourself how to organize a stupid Excel spreadsheet that looks like crazy impossible to read by a machine where you have like planks line and people collapsing collapsing columns and you know things written in different way. You understand at this point that it's not the way to manipulate data. You need to have it tidy, you need to have it in a certain way to like manipulate databases and consolidate data and all that stuff. So I think that a lot of financial people or analysts knows that, but they don't, they don't learn it, learn it. They, they just come to the conclusion that things should be done in a certain way. So mm-hmm. we are not told what to do, but we do data and analysts do data and business people do data a lot, um, but they don't, they don't have the techniques. So it was more about, learning the techniques from the tech uh, the tech scene from how mm-hmm. what's the best techniques to actually do stuff mm. uh, your intuition is good you only have you only given an excel spreadsheet so you don't you have no choice to do excel like you, it's literally only what you what you what you're given uh, mm-hmm. the rest is it stuff mm-hmm. so i think that the move was made because i was so frustrated that this word was not for me then i went there and be like I'm going to understand the hell of what is going on on the other side. Oh, and, yeah. um, and this is, yeah, this is out of the frustration of being like, why, why should, yeah. why, why I'm not able to spin up a notebook? Why I'm not able to run code? Why, why are you blocking me and, 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 and letting me only do stuff in a stupid spreadsheet that can not scale yeah. and is a risk for all the companies. So, yeah, um, yeah. yeah. That, that's more my mindset on, on the topic. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for sharing. I I truly I'm truly aligned with your point of view. I feel like when you go into the finance sector, you will do a lot of PowerPoint and Excel. And this is such a bad use of the time because, for example, you have this library that can automate um that can like you can use Python to update PowerPoint. Yeah. So yeah. and right now I'm working on an application where, where this is related and yeah, yeah. can allow a lot of time to my team. And Excel, PowerPoint, exactly, Excel, and you Excel can do... wings and other things like I think it's a, 
Exactly. And at the end of the day, we just need, so this is super frustrating. And I think that uh, financial sector but through applications like yours will be able to go forward. But so far, I feel like it is very like the old method, like the old way of doing things. And this is so bad because it's such a waste of time in terms yeah. of using Excel, in terms of doing over and over PowerPoint and Excel and, and, and like grinding and like doing 14 hours a day of yeah. the same thing over and over where once you have your templates and your notebooks and you just know what you need, you just, you just re-execute everything. And of course it is simplified, but um, I, I, I truly agree with you. And this but is- But you know what, what, what is interesting also is that what I found out in the, on the other side, on the tech side is, oh, what the hell? Is it as complicated as that? So I was, I was coming from my Excel world where I was able to go to production myself. I was able to change things myself. I was able to like communicate and bring trust to uh, the, the executives that I was serving myself. Only me. I, it, I, you don't need anybody else. Like I can pull the data myself, get the, the analysis done and, and that's it. And mm -hmm. when you come to the Excel, like to, when you switch side and you're on, then tech scene, then mm -hmm. you need, um, then you are considered a data analyst. You need to work with the data scientist to run model. You need to work with the data engineer to pull data into the data warehouse. You need to work with DevOps to make sure that things are running properly well, with software engineers to understand that the data. You have so many different, and it's so complicated and the workload is so big in companies mm. like it, that you're like, okay, so I understand why I'm, I need to get back to Excel because this thing that you're doing is so much complicated that I cannot spend any minute trying to get in, into this world. So it's not like one side is blank and the other is, is, is black. It's, it's mm -hmm. like there is a, a kind of, um, I, I think also in the data world, the, the, we are still trying to learn and figure out what, how data should be done. Is it software engineering? Not really, but kind of. Is it like, Data engineering, is it a specific field? Yes, but it's also software. So it's, it's, there is a lot of things and there's like Peter Wong, the, the, the creator of Anaconda, who talks about it in a, in a show uh, with uh, Lex Friedman in the podcast where he's, mm. he's basically telling like, hey, data and software are merging together and we are still learning how to do it. So when you come from a financial standpoint where you're like, I need just to th get things done. I don't care about how it's done i want the numbers and i want them now mm. so you don't have the luxury of wait, waiting for technicalities to be put in place you just mm -hmm. like you grind with the people and you you make people work inside the excel spreadsheet hours and hours because you cannot wait you cannot lift the cost of like finding out how to do data the right way mm -hmm. and um so i think out of those two frustration we're like Okay, so what's the common document that everybody use? Notebooks. Where people are stuck to go and move their notebooks to something else? Uh, oh, it's the productionization of the notebooks. So we, we try to tackle this first and, and this is how we got there. Mm. That's super interesting. I would like to hear you about, uh, well, after I, I will ask you about uh, how do you, like, as a data analyst, how do you use a notebook and do you have a framework to approach course, specific problems? It's about the standard, yeah. It's about but, building uh, a standard. All, all, that... every, every notebook is organized the same way. You have input, not input, model, and output. You put your variables, import your variables, put your inputs. Then you write your model section where you basically have all your functions and then mm -hmm. you create your output. And all my notebooks are structured the same way. And mm -hmm. this is this is why for the people who say like oh notebook shouldn't play in production and that that sort of things, mm. I just always answer that it's not about the notebooks; it's about how you write stuff. If, if you write mm. dirty code, if you don't know how to write a good novel, or if you don't if you don't if you're not a good writer, then mm -hmm. obviously it's not going to stick in people's head or and on on or on any kind of machines. So yeah. you need to just learn how to write so that things are understood properly by the machine. And I think that this input model output is kind of the framework that works every single time in any kind of data problem. Uh, mm. We should always separate the three and start with the output and then go backward to what mm. needs to be done. So yeah, so yeah. it's about building a framework. NAS is literally, you pointed out, NAS is literally a framework mm -hmm. to develop data products. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we really compare ourselves like React you know, came into the game for web development where you, you, you they basically structure the way you put your HTML, CSS, 
and GS5. NAS is just saying, okay, you should organize your IPY and B file, your notebook file in, in such a way and using such kind of component that you can actually ship data products uh, mm -hmm. securely. Mm. That's super interesting. Um, you mentioned earlier that uh, six years ago, you left your company. Um, you left your company, your nine five job to mm -hmm. launch your own consulting team. Um, and you're leading NAS. So I wanted to know about, uh, like, why did you leave your job and, and what kind of, uh, what kind of missions do you take with your consulting company? And does, is NAS, is NAS, sorry, uh, in the middle of the, of how you guys work, uh, how you team work? Can you give us a little bit insight on yeah, this? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, so NAS is, was born out of um, different freelancers, basically. I am, and we still have this structure. We are, we are, we are all, we are all having our own structure. So um, people came, people went. There was different, like the team evolved from two people, me, my brother, to seven, eight, then went back to five, then three, then you know, it's it's a collective of people, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, um, where I am, the guy and. Uh, sticking <laughs> basically in the in the whole uh, game, but I'm really it's about freedom. Uh, the, the, um, so it's, I left my one nine to five for finding freedom, and um, I cannot expect anybody else in my team to do the other, like to to be not free. So um, that's that's the first uh, thing. Um, mm -hmm. I, I I wanted to get free on. Uh, free to think, free to build, free to you know um, uh, move <laughs> and be anywhere else. So it's 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 what motivated me to to do the the, the bye bye to a nine to five job, and mm -hmm. um, and um, it's it's pretty cool, but it's also very difficult because you don't have the comfort of. I get paid at the end of the day anyhow. <laughs> and um, mm -hmm. this this is something where we have been always struggling um, by allocating time between the product and the consulting work. And mm -hmm. we still have some tr some struggle on this. Mm -hmm. When you say the product, you're talking about NAS? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's basically two things in what I do. There's product and there's still consulting where I'm still mm -hmm. providing services from time to time. I'm doing mm -hmm. it now. To, to to provide business people with expertise on how to to do data the right way for mm -hmm. their activities. Yes. So, um, and this is very lucrative. This is bringing a lot of money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when, when, when the product business is about burning a lot of money. And um, so to, to actually get, get to a point where this can scale. So yes. it's always hard because we didn't raise any money or so. So we, we we always try to like play on on both feet. Um, mm -hmm. Of course, it's hard to because you you don't go as fast as you would like in the product, but you mm -hmm. also take time to always connect to the ground and to the you know the the fact that I'm always connected to problems that you know companies have in the financial sector in financial departments my other partner works with other kind of topics like in the tech scene my cto is working with technical teams to help them as well so it's also a strength i think that we we are connected to you know consulting work mm -hmm. um because it, it just makes what we do in the product much more accurate and and we even if we took like it's two, it's been two years now. We we still think that we did it the logical way. We did. We don't feel like we missed something in the way. We slowly build up our conviction to yes, this tool is actually needed, mm. and and this is um, this is quite reward, rewarding. I think. Um, mm. Mm. I would be super interested uh, in. Uh, you that uh, is listening actually um, I would be super interested to have feedbacks on like if you can give a look to NAS give a feedback on the SaaS and uh, and check it out uh, I would be super interested uh, for the people to to discover and to understand and let us know if it brings value and if it helps you um, you are talking about uh, well I just wanted to get back on one point maybe we have some 
business angels listening. <laughs> and uh, do you consider uh, getting funded or do you want to keep it? Uh, how do you see it? We do. We do. We did just need to find the right partners and it's mm. hard. Because um, there is basically two kind of investors. There is the mm -hmm. one who knows you what you do. They know and they understand the market. They understand what it is, what concretely it is. They they would be a user of your product. Mm -hmm. And there is the other guys that just want to pump and 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 see and their game. And so those guys who knows the product, they I think they play more long game than the one that goes, hey, I am I can have I can like put this much money in your company, but you need to burn it now. You need to burn it fast. You need to reach this tomorrow and this uh, the day after. Um, I think that you need to understand that if you bring someone in your company, you need to know which side is, is the, the person that you're picking in. Because um, I think that there is literally only two types of, of, of mm. and and those two types are are dramatically different. And mm. um, so I met with a lot of investors. I met with a lot of like uh, business angels. So, and we are now consolidating everything to a pool of people mm -hmm. that uh, can, can, can help us to, to found the first stage of funding, that mm -hmm. would be a pre-seed uh, stage. But we also want to open our um, capital to our community. And mm -hmm. uh, we are also thinking and trying to figure out how to bring the community together and enable our contributors because um, NAS is open source and all those templates created are created by um, contributors. So we want also to have them in because um, at the end of the day, it's about like community and people that agrees on a certain set of rules and standards on mm -hmm. how to use notebooks to create products. Mm -hmm. So we cannot do it without the help of like people in the notebook community that has been there for years. So mm -hmm. this is the kind of people that we are trying to connect with and people that sees the potential of notebook in the future to be like building blocks of data products. So, mm. yeah. That's super interesting. Um, I was considering, because I remember in the first call, we talked about uh, AWS and how they sponsored uh, NAS. So yeah. I would like to go on that, but just before, uh, I would like to ask you, when we when we build projects, when when we're very passionate, and even if it's if it's with no code um, or if it's with a Flask application in Python or in C plus plus, and and we connect all those projects to do one thing, there is always this community thing, like this this need. It's fundamental to build a community around the projects that we want to develop, to have feedbacks and evolve. And I wanted to ask you about building a community. Um, how does this start? And how do you get feedback? How many times do you get feedback? Did you build a Discord? Did you build a Slack? Can you give us a bit of insight of your vision regarding the community of NAS? Um, yeah, so it, it started out very randomly. You know, when we, we started building NAS, we were, we were doing it for our own sake. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. we, we we're trying to fix our client's problem. Like, it's taking time to deliver, guys. Can you speed it up? Because I cannot wait three weeks before those guys push it in production. So we're like, okay, let's do it. Boom, we created this thing. And um, a few months later, it started to feel like, oh, but if Netflix is doing it, then we might check out how they productionize Notebook, how they use Notebooks in production. Mm -hmm. And then we talked about it to AWS and they were like, mm, that's, that's actually a very good idea. Um, so they were, not, they were not doing it with uh, SageMaker, which is their Notebook instance um, in AWS. So they were like, okay, fine. You can try it out and you can like, make some research and we're going to give you some server, free server time so you can bring free users in and see if they like it or not and learn about that. And and by the way, if you can share what you learn, it's good. So um, yeah, we started collaborating with AWS like this. AWS is a really, really, really uh, interesting um, uh, venture to, to you know get a project uh, up and running very fast. I feel like mm. they are really they have good people that connects with you on a human level. They are like mm. so good at human level service, 
and you know uh, how they how they approach you the connection that they make with you it's really big shout out to them really because mm. um i feel like if you want to compare to other players th there's not as much human interaction in the other other players um mm. and how did it happen how did you get in contact with aws did you reach out did, yeah. was it on LinkedIn yeah literally we reached May? out yeah we were like hey we have this because first it was uh, the the project was on a small um digital ocean server um so and yeah. and we started having people logging in and being like and it, it didn't feel right to just push everybody on the small server we had to deploy it in, in a cluster with kubernetes and with different docker machines and you know a, a bit more advanced kind of infrastructure yeah. Yeah, so we're like hey yeah yeah so we were like hey we have this project uh it's running on book in production um we are just on this small server we are using the same technology as netflix we want to package this thing that this is doing for everybody else would you consider like helping us and getting getting a few credits um so yeah i was the one pushing this um, um and um uh, yeah this is how it started that's awesome and like did you reach out to someone linkedin or was it a mail that you, you know, find um or I, many messages through those people at uh, station f uh, i know that aws oh, yeah. was there so i just reached out to the, to the contacts over there okay okay station f is in, in paris right yeah it's the um, it's, it's the, the center start of, of incubator startups. yeah so there was all this fuss about hey yeah. there's this much company going there so i just looked at the the, the yeah, Station F is the place to be in France for startups, right? Yeah, I, I think it's it's fairly good. Uh, I'm, I'm I think it's it's a good thing that they have created this, uh, but it's not because you're not there that you don't exist. And mm -hmm. it's it's also very noisy. There's a lot of people. There's you know the, the I feel, coming back to freedom. I feel like you're not. When you're at Station Half, you, you're like, I need to go there. I need to connect there. I need to be there every single day. So mm. you're not free anymore to do whatever like you want to do yeah. and, and and do work remotely. And you know, mm. you're still it's kind of yeah. grinding mode, no? You, you, yeah, you're yeah. going to yeah. like meeting everyone, yeah. learning fully. Okay, yeah. okay, that's awesome. Okay, this is super interesting. How how you reached out to AWS and they give you resources and for you that is listening at the moment. Uh, it also can show that if you have a valuable lady, just sometimes reaching out to the right persons, well, you can easily get some great, uh, great materials, great, um, great tools that you think you should pay, but they would be able to help you. And no, no, that's super pay. interesting. Don't pay. Ask for exactly. free. Exactly. For, you know, it's, that's it's awesome. Kind of just need to reach out, and it's the same for building a community. Literally, mm -hmm. you you don't ask for someone to get to, to you know, you, I'm not reaching to, to you, you, you can have people interested in your idea and not forced into your ideas. That's, mm -hmm. that's the whole point. You need to, don't need to. So for, for the community, I said, it's the same, but it's not literally the same. It's like, it's the same idea. You need to just show up and show what you're doing. And mm -hmm. in the community thing, it's a bit different. Like, you cannot reach as much people by email. Um, so you just need to use the social media mm -hmm. uh, to be there and just show up every day or every two days or every week. It was hard for me at first to do this like LinkedIn post and doing stuff on LinkedIn. But uh, it's a game everything is a game so you just need to ha learn how to play it and um and communicate and it's it's enabling you to communicate your ideas so we open sourced we you know reached out to aws got our first, first uh, credits uh, mm -hmm. open source launched on product hunt uh got the first 400 500 users then um we started building from there with the mm. feedbacks and with the people using it. Yeah, but mm. I would like to have more templates. Templates are really valuable to me because now I know that I can run the notebook on schedule, but what should I exactly do? Mm -hmm. So people like starting throwing ideas. So basically year one, we built the, uh, the first foundation of people that were interested into the features. Mm -hmm. um, year two, 
uh, the features and the drivers basically the year two which was last year was more about templates and starting like um understanding how templates can be um a good um how the, 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 the repository of templates that we have been building can be mm-hmm. a good way to keep up with the community. Because mm-hmm. um, um, we use the GitHub project to follow the different templates that we want to put in place. We tag people on the, on the GitHub. Like we, we didn't do this at first. We, we were not allowed, uh, aware of GitHub and how to use GitHub. But now we cannot live without GitHub. It's the, the foundation of how the community and everything works in NAS. Mm. GitHub. And every decision, every like tick, every subject, every issue, everything is. If you bring this culture of uh, on the on of the um, community building, you also need to bring the way that people interact with the community. So first, mm-hmm. we were like, "Hey, this is the repository of all the templates. Just uh, push a PR, and we'll figure it out." Then we mm-hmm. spend hours <laughs> doing like the review, and because. The notebooks were not clean. They were not organized a certain way. So we started coming up with this like input model and output structure, and people started following. And then we put the CI in place, and the oh. CI enabled us to figure out, oh, but the, there is no input section or there is no model section. So please do it. So we try to automate the way that people oh. got feedback from us because the the contribution was not good. And then we used GitHub Project, and we started making like. Uh, community calls every every once in a while to show the, the roadmap, backlog, in progress, review done, to explain how things were moving inside the, the project and why their PR was not validated and stuff like that. And then we, we keep on pushing on the, anytime you have a new template updated, I was pushing it to the social media, like, hey, shout out to this guy, he created this thing, check, it, check out the templates. Mm. And this is how you start the flywheel. That's crazy. That's crazy. Thanks for sharing how you manage your Git. So, so basically, I would like to ask you a few questions. So the first thing, because it's uh, open source, so you pushed all the code of NAS yeah. to Git, right? Yeah. So you have, so you have, um, so, so it's, uh, it's a SaaS, I understand. Is it's it a inf- notebook infrastructure. It's an infra- It's literally an infrastructure where infrastructure. you run like Docker machines and the Docker mm. machines have um, Jupyter Lab uh, and um, our layers, like mm. the features, the drivers, and, mm. and the templates. So for people to pull uh, the project, they need to install Docker, they need to install Kubernetes. Yes. and Not Kubernetes, have... actually. We have a way to run it only on one Docker machine. So oh. the, 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 what you can do is run it on your Docker machine with only one Docker. You have, need to have Docker installed, and you, you can run it. Mm-hmm. But it's limited to just the key feature, which is the, the scheduler feature. For the mm-hmm. rest, we need microservices that are hosted in the cloud. So it's like dependent mm-hmm. on you need to be uh, in the cloud to, to run them. But mm-hmm. the essential thing that people were trying to do is like schedule notebooks on a daily basis. Mm-hmm. This is what we started providing okay. open source. And so you mentioned that uh, tagging people, tagging people. So meaning, so once someone have done a template, you push once you validate it because you automated the process of, okay, he's sending me this template, let's reduce this, this and that. Okay, if yeah. we have the, the input, um, the functions and the output and everything is correct, then we will review it. And if it's all good, we push it. Um, yeah. That's correct? That's the yeah, logic? Yeah, exactly. Okay. We, we merge so, it to master branch. Awesome. And so once you've done that, when you push, you tag the person into the Git, right? So to um, give the person we, credit, we already he, he, no. He already he was already um, pinged on the task. So th- there is an issue with all the list of the problems. All those issues are seen in a roadmap where you have all the backlog and stuff you need to do. Mm-hmm. Then they just say, "Hey, I want to work on this template." Then we add this guy to the issue. Wow. We create the pull request, and then the mm-hmm. guy works on the pull request. The guy works on it he sent us a message like hey this is ready please review on the pull okay. request so issue is the problem pull request is the solution we check out the solution and what the solution is checked and validated yes then we merge it to the master branch uh-huh. where all the templates live uh-huh. and um because every new notebook is a new branch in in the thing and then okay. i push it on social media i use posts uh, and and sometimes videos to promote the work of of, mm. uh, of the people 
Mm -hmm. That's super interesting. That's always some things that fascinate me, like so talented people that will just work for free to like for the community, like like all these libraries, Python libraries, masters that build crazy libraries that everyone is going to use, and uh, and they are just part of the project. And well, a lot of a lot of uh, the people who are doing this, uh, I think, really learn from what they're doing, and this will really help them. Mm -hmm. But I'm always amazed about the, this community spirit and. Nas is a perfect example of uh, of this. So, thank you for sharing and for sharing. And you were mentioning like you were using a backlog, like kind of an agile method um, yeah. of a backlog, um, things to be done this week, and then uh, in pre like doing and then done and all of that. Is this? Do you use a specific application uh, to do so? No, GitHub or project. GitHub project. GitHub, GitHub yeah. project allows you to manage this. Yes. GitHub, okay. GitHub all the way. Okay. Never. Um, did you ever use tre uh, Trello? Trello. Yeah, Trello. Yeah, we started on Trello. Oh, and then you switched to GitHub Project. Yeah, because one thing that I'm also very, very hardcore about is use the minimum amount of tools. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's a perfect transition. Can you give us a little bit of a, how do you organize yourself? What tools do you use? How do you be? How are you productive? Because you have the consulting company, you need to develop the, the NAS, and you need also to review the people and the people that comments on Git and the community and post on social media, and way a lot more things because you mentioned music, you mentioned a lot of patience. So how do you deal with all those things that are important to you, and how do you stay organized and keep time for yourself? I'm a minimalist. <laughs> the short answer. <laughs> um, I I have a um, very minimal approach to things, so I'm okay. I'm trying to get as as less things own as less thing as I as I can um, use the less amount of tools that I can use uh, limit the number of interactions also I can have. Um, it's all about limiting and curating rather than expanding and keep expanding. I'm just, because I have this kind of mind where my mind can go mm -hmm. boom every time. Like it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's not, you don't, you don't want to be in my mind. So it's, it's like explosion of ideas and stuff. So mm -hmm. I, since the very beginning when I was little, I always tried to, I understood that I needed to like contain and, and put like, um, limits mm -hmm. and constraints basically mm -hmm. to be creative okay. because otherwise I think creativity is about constraints it's mm -hmm. about pushing constraint to you so you can do something in in the perimeter that you want in time that you want with the tools that you want and if you don't succeed then you just do other stuff mm -hmm. um, so I'm using my mails are everything. Like my mails are is my to do list. I'm deciding what to do and when to do it. I'm not like a next a slave on my of my emails, but it's my main channel of, of communication. Mm -hmm. I use GitHub for all the code. I use LinkedIn and um, HubSpot for the sales and interactions. And there is this like Slack community that uh, where we have the the mm. chats. <clears throat> Other than that, <clears throat> Notion. Uh, for documentation um, mm -hmm. and um, and NAS for all the automation. <laughs> and NAS is a, is a uh, we work it's for the automation engine. engine yeah. Exactly, it's uh, irreplaceable. NAS, yeah. check it out. Guys. Yeah. Um, awesome. And could you give us a little bit insights uh, of how do you organize your week and a day? Mm -hmm. Like kind of I, a template yeah. of... Uh, I take no meetings until uh, Friday afternoon, <laughs> um, and um, I work for clients Monday. I focus my time and, and brain power on clients' topic, customer topics on Monday, Tuesday, uh -huh. um, and then um, midday Wednesday. I start like taking calls and. Um, and work for everything open source and uh, products. Um, that's how basically I spread my week. I often work on weekends because I don't feel like it's anything like 
like the weekend or the week I can do pretty much what I mm. want in my schedule. But so yeah, that's that's how um, that's how I do. Uh, mm. I really like the idea of like not getting in contact with anyone until Wednesday. Like yeah. and so, so because a lot of the time some meetings will be will interrupt you in doing something and and you yeah. will need it will take like a lot of time to get back into the place where you where you had this flow and you were going and yeah and um yeah all right well that's uh very happy to 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 have learned uh, i hope you learned a lot of things too uh on what we just discussed uh let us know uh let us know what uh lessons uh you've learned let us know what you think of nas i would like to ask you as i said at the beginning about uh environmental issues and your posts on LinkedIn that are toward this, uh, these specific problems, environmental problems. Could you give us a little bit of perspective of your vision regarding using the data to solve environmental problems or social problems, uh, health yeah. problems? Yeah, sure. Um, so the, the reasoning behind, behind this is uh, uh, when I was in finance, I saw too many numbers on finance, pure finance, internal numbers, mm -hmm. only about like how the industry is, uh, like all the like the machines are running, how the sales are running. It's all internal data. Mm -hmm. And I feel like we need to connect to the other, the rest of the word data. As a company, it's a very, it's a big problem for companies. They don't see what's, outside of their realm and that's that's a big big risk for for companies in the future to not consider other variables like you know covid was a big lesson for a lot of people mm -hmm. so in during covid in 2020 we started doing this thing called word situation room where we mm -hmm. had we created a dashboard with like a covid indicator and 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 the financial indicator and mm -hmm. some companies started to look up and use this in their board meetings some big French companies were starting using it. So this project that I'm doing is kind of a long, long, long story about like, hey, we started doing this and during the COVID and now I'm I'm still working on it on and off and trying to push on this. But it's always hard because it's not what brings you the money at the end of the of the month. So mm -hmm. I still have to work on all this stuff, but this project, the word situation room project with this idea of creating an in, a word health indicator is something mm. that I have in the back of my mind for a while. And um, I just think that if you, if we manage to pull and aggregate the data from different um, uh, sources for eco uh, environment, but uh, social and uh, political and, you know, many different like uh, indicators that are free available, um, you can basically get those indicator in this, in this simple table and weight those indicators to be like, hey, political, or like uh, gender diversity is this weight and mm. you weight all your indicators you consider all the indicators on the same uh you know uh, scale from zero to ten let's say like all those indicators were will be rated from zero to ten and you can create with this a, 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 a global indicator of is the word better today than yesterday is the mm. air quality better like basically air quality which is a daily thing is very interesting to follow like you can re there is millions of people that do that have machines to to get the air quality so you can really know if yesterday was better than um uh today um through the the, the daily data that, that the mm -hmm. AQ, api uh open air and aq something like that is is running i'm going to to develop more about this specific one mm. i feel like um companies should always have an eye on on one kind of indicator of how the world is doing overall and and also the ability to drill down inside the specifics of those public uh, indicators mm. i think it would just be better for us as as um, citizen as well um, mm. we like you watch the like weather every day you know that it's going to be 25 degrees outside and you will wear this or wear that <laughs> why not like having this kind of stuff for um the planet health you know like how how things are going if, if we during covid we saw a real big drop into like all the air quality biodiversity stuff like that it's just good to understand you cannot do anything about it you cannot do anything about the weather i mean 
but you could actually do some things when it's come, mm -hmm. it comes to the you know the word help uh, mm -hmm. leader. You can actually try to 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 do some actions. So I feel like it's 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 good for companies. Society would be also uh, benefit. It would benefit society as well to have this kind of indicator running. Mm. So it's like the, the big project that I, the big dream project that I have in the back of my head to be able to put this indicator and and automate the way that this indicator is produced every single day through maybe Twitter posts and you know a dashboard and yeah it's just I'm I'm just on and off on this project never really finished it but <laughs> I think it's it's uh, as you as we were saying before it's a you, you cannot really see success in one year this project mm. was 2020 and it's still running in. Mm. So 2020, one year, two years, three years. I think in 10 years, eventually we have a cool indicator that everybody can look at. Um, but um, yeah, that's that's how I see it. So I'm inviting everyone, literally everyone uh, that wants to to help and uh, and follow what I'm trying to figure out with this uh, word health indicator um, on LinkedIn. I'm posting about it, uh, and um, and you can reach out anytime. That's super interesting. I am personally. Uh, and the people who are listening would have uh, listened me listened to me talk about this multiple times, but I'm very passionate about education. And I feel like all those indicators individually, that won't mean that much. We won't be able to do that much. But let's say now that we have this indicator in production and like worldwide, and we can see the maps and we can see like, we can go into details of like places. And then we can use this indicator with like, um poverty indicators in the world with uh, educational uh, lack of uh, like lack of schools and like having a world map with all the schools and and like then using algorithm that can map out where we need to build map uh, where we need to build new schools that would help the most of the people there and that would be those indicators one by one won't add anything but like building all those indicators together and being able to share all this data because in the end these data like if if the intention is good and 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 the um, the people who are building those tools have good intentions and and equality of opportunities in mind and just like trying to help out because as you mentioned those projects don't bring money and those indicators itself you can see them in like how the companies can implement implement them in their meetings to like have a better understanding of the world. But I, I truly feel that long term, many of these indicators will allow us to build tools that will have a crazy impact on uh, equality of opportunities. And I'm really sure. looking forward to learn more from from your visualizations and, and what you're building, whether it's NAS. Uh, whether it's as a consulting company, whether it's uh, health, uh, whether it's an uh, indicator. Um, this is super inspiring. So Thank thanks you. a lot. We've reached a little bit to the end of the episode and I have just two more questions about you. But uh, I wanted to thank you a lot for taking the time to sharing with us. Uh, I know that you are pretty busy and, and you don't take a lot of meetings. <laughs> so thank you for, uh, for being you. here and sharing it with us on the podcast. It was really great to talk to you, Tomar. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, two last questions. The first one is, how can people reach out to you? Where can they see uh, what you do? Uh, is it GitHub? Is it LinkedIn? What What yeah. do you have available for people to see? GitHub, LinkedIn, and Twitter. Okay. So I will, I I will put... I have a YouTube channel that I might use a lot more. Um, mm -hmm. I have. A, I will put all the links. Uh, I will put all the links in the description of the podcast so that you can find uh, Jeremy um, on his socials. Um, we are experimenting on on Let's Talk AI Twitch Live to like build live things and discuss or learn things live. You know, like for example, we take a we take a Flask application and we try to do something and uh, we just do it live with a thinking out loud process. And we just started recently. We're just trying things out, but uh, super interesting. Um, and last question, uh, and I thank you again for coming on the podcast, is do you have any message? It can be anything. It can be related to AI. Uh, it can be related to you, to you, to whatever. But do you have any message for us? Uh, I don't know. Um, I think one of the things that people suffer the most is the title that they have to do stuff. So I would say like, Fuck the titles and, and just uh, focus on, on being useful. <laughs> you heard it. Fuck the title. <laughs> okay. Thanks a lot, Jeremy, uh, again for your time. And I wish you a wonderful day.
Thank you, man. Bye.